Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's program. Joining me in the studio today is City Councilman Paul Krikorian. He, of course, represents the uh, constituents in Los Angeles in the second City Council uh, District. Welcome, Council Member. Thank you, How are you doing? It's and a pleasure to be with you, and to you as well. Thank you. It's good to be back with you. Yes, thank you. Uh, so uh, we are about 90 some odd days to the centennial of the Armenian Genocide. And the City Council has always been a venue where the Armenian Genocide has been commemorated uh, very uh, properly. But what are some plans that the City Council has this year for the centennial? One of the proudest responsibilities I've had as the first Armenian American member ever elected to the Los Angeles City Council is recognizing uh, the genocide each year, each April. And uh, we've done it in a variety of ways. We've honored people uh, who have made a significant contribution to genocide recognition, such as yourself and others. Um, we have uh, recognized the historical contribution of Near East Relief and agencies uh, similar to that. This year for the centennial, I wanted to do something that was different and that would have a long-term uh, impact, especially outside of our community. And so we created an art contest uh, within my office, a, a genocide centennial art contest that will be open to anyone. Uh, there's a student group uh, and then there's a, an adult group. And no matter where people live, they can uh, submit their, their, their art. And the idea here is to, to cast the widest possible net for creative uh, interpretations of the significance of the genocide and its centennial uh, and ongoing denial and the need for justice, um, the significance of that to all people. And um, so I think that this is going to be very impactful and, and the beautiful part of it is that the uh, winners will be recognized in the city council and um, we hope that uh, the, some of the winning artwork will even be displayed on uh, Los Angeles City buses and otherwise. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, we'll come back to that uh, shortly, but have you been receiving uh, applications already or submissions for? We have. We, we have, uh, and I want to thank Horizon and, and Aspadas have, have spread the word about it. Uh, people who'd like more information about it can go to my website at cd 2 lacity.org and the application is there and they, we'd be happy to receive uh, more submissions. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, uh, there's a number of other th activities going on as well. Of course, there's going to be a very significant march uh, on April 24th and my office has been uh, instrumental in helping to coordinate that. It, it will be a large scale March, and so there's been a, a need for coordinating street closures and so forth, and, and my office has been directly involved mm -hmm. with that as well. Yes, yeah, six miles. I was at the press conference recently where they uh, unveiled the uh, project. If you do want to uh, participate in the uh, uh, poster contest uh, and the art contest, uh, the uh, website is on your screen. Uh, uh, you can feel free to submit. What is the deadline for that? The deadline is February 15th. Okay. And the reason that it's so short is because we need to have uh, the art in so that we can prepare the bus advertisements and so on uh, in advance of April 24th. Okay, so there is uh, almost a month left, uh, a little bit less maybe. Uh, please submit your artwork to uh, Councilman Krikorian's office. Uh, talk about the display on the buses, that's very interesting. Well, again, I wanted not only to have uh, the uh, artists who are participating be the broadest possible uh, scope. I wanted the audience who sees it to be the broadest possible uh, range of people as well. And what better way to do that uh, than to get this art out on the streets of Los Angeles, rolling through the streets on a bus. Um, and we have, uh, we have an advertising policy for the Department of Transportation, DASH buses and others that uh, permits this. And so I think it would be important to be able to spread the message to a wider audience 
uh, through that kind of an advertising venue. And I think that's great because the dash buses sometimes go where the regular buses don't inside the neighborhoods and in the various cities. So that's uh, great. We'll catch up with your office uh, about that as the process is moving along. And this past November, uh, the president of the nagorno karabakh Republic, Bako Sahakyan, uh, recognized you and uh, uh, gave you a medal. How's, what is that all about? <coughs> well, of course, it was a tremendous honor uh, to be able to be recognized for the work that I've done uh, for Artsakh, uh, both in the state legislature and in the council. But um, honestly, uh, much more important than recognition uh, is that we continue to fight for uh, free and independent Artsakh, and I'm committed to continuing to do that uh, in the council. And it's an honor and a privilege for me, able to, for me to be able to do that work. Um, I've been to Artsakh uh, twice, most recently uh, in September of 2013, uh, when I led a, a group there, uh, along with Assemblymember Nazarian, uh, who led a group uh, from the state legislature and uh, council member a uh, colleague of mm -hmm. mine, Bob Blumenfield, and I, uh, as well as representatives of the ANC, um, were um, honored to be able to, to travel to, to Hayastan and to Artsakh. And um, it, was, it was very impactful. I think it was very impactful for all of the elected officials who went. And um, I'm certainly committed to making sure that we continue to showcase um, the uh, just cause of the uh, Republic of Artsakh. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year you hosted an event uh, for the anniversary of uh, the liberation of Shushi, and Shushi has a very interesting place in Los Angeles because it's a friendship city with the city of Los Angeles. Uh, what are some of the other events that we can look forward to vis-a-vis -vis that whole uh, friendship uh, issue? Well, um, when we were in Artsakh, it was um, one of the most memorable experiences of my life that uh, all of the people of Shushi came out to welcome us. It was a very festive atmosphere. The leadership of the city, um, the children of the city were out to celebrate the naming of a park, the Los Angeles Shushi Friendship Park. And this was a tribute to uh, our est having established the friendship city relationship, which uh, my resolution uh, achieved. Mm -hmm. And um, that was a great privilege. And, and so in addition now to trying to find ways that we can be of pragmatic help, uh, providing uh, material to, uh, to Artsakh like, uh, uh, that, that they need, that the city of Los Angeles may have, uh, I also want to recognize them here as well uh, with the naming of um, something here. And we're um, working on that right now to try to get a, a, a similar kind of naming that will permanently recognize uh, Artsakh here in the city of Los mm -hmm. Angeles. Uh, I mean, this issue of uh, recognition of Artsakh self-determination and independence has been getting a lot of uh, traction. Obviously, the two houses of the state, uh, the state legislature in California passed le uh, resolutions to that effect, urging Congress to uh, follow suit. But the most significant one came uh, last week from the foreign ministry uh, of Uruguay, where the foreign minister basically uh, said, urge the world community to do that. Uh, with the current political climate, uh, do you think that this is something attainable in the near future? Well, I certainly hope so, and I think it's more and more urgent uh, with each passing year. Um, as we see Azerbaijan continue to arm itself, using its petrodollars to enhance the strength of its military, uh, when we see the kind of saber-rattling um, from the government there, it's clear to me uh, that Artsakh needs its friends to stand up and speak out. 
um, we need to send a strong signal throughout the world um, that this small democratic country is entitled to continue to survive. It's entitled to its self-determination. And we need to make very clear before the outbreak of another war um, that any in incursion by Azerbaijan will be intolerable by the world community. Mm -hmm. uh, the recent hostility shooting down of a helicopter and, and other uh, acts of war uh, by Azerbaijan should be recognized as intolerable mm -hmm. to the world. And I think one way that we send that signal is by um, standing up as a world community and recognizing Artsakh's independence. Mm -hmm. There's certainly be, uh, been a change in the tenor of kind of U.S. approach to Azerbaijan. We're seeing the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal taking uh, editorial positions urging Washington to look over its position on Artsakh and the most, uh, on Azerbaijan rather, and the most recent one was from former Ambassador uh, Kozlaric who said that Azerbaijan does not is not uh, is no longer the partner that we had hoped it would be 20 years ago. Uh, it, are you seeing some kind of a shift uh, in U.S. policy toward Azerbaijan? I, I I can't say that I've seen a shift in in U.S. policy yet, but I hope we'll see that shift. Um, our our foreign policy can't only be determined by energy needs. We can't um, overlook the human rights violations of nations because they have oil. Um, it's just, it's, it's not the American way. And this is a country that has been a, um, an outrageous outlaw dictatorship uh, throughout its existence, and especially in recent years. Um, it's been a country that um, has abused the rights of uh, its own people, of the free press. Um, it has uh, celebrated the murder of an Armenian soldier. Um, it, it, it's just, uh, this country has um, violated basic, the basic code of decency, I think, that people around the world recognize so frequently that we just can't ignore those things just because they have oil. We're going to uh, pick up on that after a brief commercial break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Joining me today in the studio is Los Angeles City Councilman Paul Krikorian. Councilman Krikorian, welcome back. We touched on the centennial of the genocide and the Shushi Los Angeles friendship uh, city uh, agreement and situation. And of course, uh, the continued uh, uh, military aggression or rhetoric by uh, Azerbaijan. And certainly same can be said with Turkey, especially with its wide uh, you know, statements that are being made, women are second class citizens, jailing of uh, uh, reporters, cutting off Twitter and Facebook. But I want to uh, move to uh, uh, something more local. Uh, I want to talk about your first term. Uh, you're up for re-election, I believe in March it, yes. it is. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what is. What has it been like these past four years? Well, uh, it's been exhilarating. It, the city council is an entirely different kind of position than the state legislature. And um, one of the things that I've found about this position is that uh, I can have an influence on so many uh, aspects of people's lives that affect their quality of life today um, very quickly. And things happen very fast here. The, um, the ability to make change for our city as an individual member of the council is tremendous. And I like to think that in the five years that I've served on the council now, I've, I've had a personal impact on the direction of our city. Um, most notably, I suppose, is that I've served as chair of the budget committee. And uh, this was during a time when perhaps Los Angeles faced its greatest challenge in recent memory mm -hmm. uh, with regard to its budget. 
Uh, we, when I was sworn into the City Council, we were facing a projected $1.1 billion budget deficit for this fiscal year. Uh, and in those five years, we've whittled that away to the point that we have a balanced budget now. Um, and uh, while we, at the same time, we've built up a strong reserve and we've avoided massive layoffs. So I think it was a, a very successful um, effort to right the fiscal ship and to make sure that we um, can have a strong foundation to continue to serve our constituents mm -hmm. uh, in the decades to come. And, and you've also had a, a significant impact on the lives of your Armenian American constituents, especially in how you've enhanced and uh, kind of helped with the, with the social service center. The ARS has opened in North Hollywood and, and some other uh, elements. T tell us about that uh, and how your constituency has been impacted in the last four years? Sure. Um, you know, I, I take very seriously my role as the only Armenian American elected official in Los Angeles history. Um, and it gives me special insights to the needs of the Armenian American community um, that, that maybe are not being met. And so uh, I was very proud to be able to work closely with the ARS uh, to provide funding uh, that will allow specialized social services uh, that are directed to the Armenian American community. Not solely, um, but, uh, uh, but the kinds of services that the ARS provides that our community um, might not be able to go anywhere mm -hmm. else to receive. And so um, that really is going to have a dramatic difference in, in changing hundreds or thousands of, of lives. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's very important. Um, another theme that I've always uh, adopted as part of my public life has been empowerment of communities. And so it's been very important to me to ensure that we had the greatest degree of participation by all citizens, um, but especially to address the disenfranchisement of the Armenian American community. And so um, I've worked very much in, in reaching out to the community, uh, in bringing people into this process, uh, and we even implemented um, having Armenian language uh, ballot materials mm -hmm. uh, for the city of Los Angeles for the first time in history, as well as, as Farsi and, and, and others, uh, because these are significant language minorities in Los Angeles. Uh, that haven't been afforded that opportunity, mm -hmm. even though they, we have more Armenian speakers than we have some other uh, language minorities mm -hmm. that have been afforded that opportunity. So by steps like this, we reach out and encourage people to be involved, encourage people to be uh, good participatory citizens, and we send the message that one of the strengths of Los Angeles is that we do have a diverse population, we embrace that, and it's important to us. How has the city changed in the last four years? Uh, it was kind of during the whole economic downturn that you came on, and uh, we are experiencing somewhat of a, a robust growth. Uh, Thank what goodness. I, yeah, <laughs> because <laughs> I will tell you that uh, those were difficult years, and, and they're still difficult. We still have too many people who are out of work. Um, or who are underemployed. But you're absolutely right that we're, we are embarking on a sustained recovery and it's clear that things, all of the trajectories are going in the right direction. Revenues are up, uh, business revenues are up. Um, so uh, the signs are good. Um, just yesterday uh, we announced, uh, the mayor announced and uh, I participated in uh, bringing Yahoo uh, to Los Angeles. They're consolidating their operations within the city of Los Angeles. So there's plenty of examples like that of new businesses arriving, economic activity uh, taking off, and I think the, the darkest times are, are behind us. Let's hope so. So the elections are on March? Yes. Um, we're, my, I'm up for re-election uh, in, in March, and um, of course I've been so proud to have the support of the Armenian American community every single time I've run for office. Uh, and um, this is an important next step for us 
uh, and I'll certainly uh, be calling upon people to show up and vote if they live in the second council district and uh, I look forward to being able to serve another term as your city council. Manager. And what what day in March? I'm sorry. March 5th. But March 5th. Oops. March 3rd. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. March 3rd. March 3rd. Okay, so uh, if you have not registered to vote, please go and do so. And March 3rd is the LA municipal elections. To, so make sure you uh, participate in those and make your uh, voice heard. You were also uh, endorsed by the Los Angeles County Democratic Party. So congratulations. And uh, I'm sure we'll hear a lot about the race uh, as the weeks and months move uh, forward. And good luck to you in March. Thank uh, you. You're also the chairman of the MTA, uh, correct? I'm not the chair. Uh, Mayor Garcetti is the yeah. chair. Um, but he, I am uh, one of his okay. appointees to the board, so it's been a, a, a great opportunity to be able to serve the San Fernando Valley and the entire county of Los Angeles mm -hmm. on the MTA board. Um, for those who don't know, this is the countywide mm -hmm. agency that runs all of the buses, all of the light rail trains, the subway, um, and uh, it, it's been a tremendous opportunity to be able to increase service, especially to the people of the Valley, and to start to build the foundation for the future of Los Angeles through investing in mm -hmm. our transportation infrastructure. Many of our viewers are uh, utilize MTA, including the person who is interviewing you. What are some changes that we can uh, look forward to in the uh, coming years? Well, um, we're investing right now in um, the biggest build-out of transportation infrastructure uh, anywhere in the country. Uh, right now, there's three rail lines under construction. Uh, there will be more soon to follow. Uh, we're planning to put another uh, sales tax measure before the voters in a coming election that will allow that process to continue for decades into the future. Uh, one of my priorities is to uh, have a better connection between the San Fernando and San Gabriel Valleys. And so we're working on a mass transit corridor that would reach all the way from Chatsworth to Pasadena and points beyond. And that will be especially important for many of your viewers mm -hmm. because uh, right now the orange line and the red line, which service the North Hollywood mm -hmm. area, um, are some of our most successful lines in the entire system. We'd like to connect those through to Burbank Airport and then through Glendale, and then through Pasadena and points beyond. So the entire um, uh, system w from on an east-west kind of axis would, um, would be much more useful for people in North Hollywood, people in Burbank, people in Glendale, people in Pasadena, and, and, and so on. As someone who's been uh, using MTA for the last more than a decade, I can definitely see the improvements on the MTA, MTA as the years progress and also uh, the kind of change in the demographic of the people who are using it. More young professionals mm -hmm. are uh, hopping on board and opting to leave their cars at home. It's remarkable. In, in our North Hollywood community, there are many people, and, and you're right to cite to the young people, the young professionals, the creative professionals, some of whom don't even own cars. Mm -hmm. And whoever thought in Los Angeles that we would get to a point where people were, uh, didn't own cars, um, it really puts the lie, I think, to the stereotypes that Los Angeles has been branded with as being anti-transit. We're not anti-transit. Um, people want to ride transit. Um, we just need to make sure that it's as easy and convenient and cost-effective for them to do so as we possibly can. Very good. Any last words to our viewers before we close? Well, um, I'm just, uh, again, I just want to say how privileged I feel to be able to represent you as, as the first Armenian ever elected to the City Council. Uh, we have an opportunity this March uh, to ensure that I'm able to continue in that position for another four years. And uh, I very much look forward to being able to continue to serve you. I ask for your support on March 3rd. And um, I look forward to uh, being able to serve not just the people of my district, but all Armenian Americans throughout the city of Los Angeles. Thank you, Council Member Krikorian. Again, if you'd like to participate in the poster, uh, the art contest, 
you can feel free to send your submissions to the council members uh, office the uh, website address is on the screen right now thank you again and we'll check back in with you uh, soon and good luck on the election thank, thank you, you it was a great pleasure to be with you sure thank you very much for joining us today hope we'll see you again here tomorrow good night